In this video, we take a look at interior lighting in VR4 Cinema 4D. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and show you at least three approaches that you can take for interior lighting in VR4 Cinema 4D. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to VR4 Cinema 4D. It's a massive 13 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of VR4 Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So let's get started with the first approach, which is a combination of a white dome light and a sun. I'm looking at my scene through a VR camera that has an exposure value of around 9. The lower the exposure value here, the more light will enter the camera. I normally use something between 8 to 11 for interior shots and 11 to 14 for exterior shots or shots with tons of direct lighting. Here I'm using 9 to get started and we can adjust it later on. Also a VR material with a light gray diffuse color with the RGB values of around 190 is assigned to all the objects in the scene. One more thing, if I open up the render settings and go to the GI or indirect lighting tab, as I previously mentioned, the primary GI engine is always brute force in VRA and the secondary GI engine can be selected between brute force and light cache. Right now it is set to light cache which has to be for interior shots or better to say difficult shots where we have a small amount of direct lighting and rely on indirect lighting or global illumination a lot because it is much faster compared to brute force mode. But when using IPR or interactive rendering VRA only uses brute force as light cache needs pre-calculation before starting the render. So even if you set it to light cache here, when you start an IPR session, the secondary GI engine will default back to brute force. And to make sure VR uses light cache for interactive rendering, you need to come to this interactive tab and enable this light cache in interactive checkbox. We'll learn about GI in the next section of the course. So let's start an interactive rendering session and add a VR dome light to the scene. As always, we are using ACES as our color manager. Obviously, the scene is too dark and I know my camera exposure is in a proper range for an interior shot. So let's start increasing the dome light intensity to 10. twenty. thirty. 30 and maybe let's settle on 45. So that is the first step. This gives us a nice overall soft lighting to work with and if you uncheck affect alpha checkbox under the options tab of the dome light, it won't affect the alpha channel so you can take your render to Photoshop, After Effects, Fusion or any other post-processing app and simply place your desired background picture behind the windows. Now we can add a very sun to the scene. As we have the white dome light, we don't really need very sky so just add a simple sun. Now we can move it around until we get something that we like. We can play around with the direction and the height of the sun to get different looks. I'm just going to align it to this pink helper null. This is your most basic interior lighting setup. For the final render, let's stop the IPR and we can get back to the startup layout. Let's go to the render settings, increase the resolution to 1920 by 1080. The noise limit can remain at 0 0.01 as it is a simple scene shading wise and we'll be using the noiser. We can have V-Ray Denoiser as well enabled. Now we can start a final render. Now 
Let me stop the render and show you the saved render in the history panel. Looks good. Very simple setup that gives you a very neutral look. You can add some color correction layers like uh, curve or white balance to make it look even better. That's up to you. So that's the first setup. Let's close the VFB and get back to our Vira Lighting 01 layout. I'll be trying to include these layouts with the project file so you can use them if you wanted to, but there are very simple setups and you can create them in a few seconds if you just take a quick look at them. Now let me turn off the sunlight and the dome light, create a null, name it first lighting setup, and put this lights under it. Also in the render settings, change the resolution to 960 by 540. We can also change the denoiser engine to NVIDIA for a faster real-time denoising. Now the second method involves a simple V-Ray Sun and Sky, so let's add a V-Ray Sun and Sky to the scene. Now let's put the sun at the same position like the previous setup. So just align it with the pink helper null. And now we can start IPR. We can select the sky and increase its intensity to four. So we get more light from the environment. Now compared to the previous setup, this setup results in a bit more colors and tones added to the render depending on where the sun is. Now if I lower the sun a bit, maybe closer to the horizon, we will get a lot warmer, darker tones. You can go lower and higher and try different looks. And obviously you can try to adjust the camera exposure or increase the intensity of the dome light or basically the sky. So this setup gives you more flexibility compared to the previous setup. The very sky colors will give you richer tones, obviously, compared to the simple white dome light that we had in the previous setup. And also, if you make sure our sky does not affect the alpha channel, we can simply replace this boring background with a much more interesting skyline or sky texture in post quite easily. And that's it. We'll skip the final render for this one. You can render it on your own. Let's stop the IPR. Again, create a new null and name it second lighting setup. Turn off the sun and the sky and put them under this null. Let's take a look at another approach using HDR images and V-Ray Sun. And this method will give a bit more to work with because you can use different HDRIs and get very different overall tone and feel. So let's add a dome light. Go to the Texture tab, add a V-Ray Bitmap node, and let's load this Sky is on Fire HDRI. We can increase the intensity to 10 probably, and let's rotate it to 100 degrees. This is the result, and now we can introduce V-Ray Sun to the mix. Let's try another HDRI before that, and this time load this Sky Sunset HDRI.
and maybe increase the dome light intensity to something like 50. And now we have introduced all of the colors from this particular HDRI to the scene and you can experiment with a few other HDRIs on your own. For now, let's stick with this one. We can obviously rotate the HDRI and get different looks. Let's leave it at 200 for now. Now we can add a V-Ray Sun and change the direction and the height of the sun. You need to have some basic common sense. You don't have to use V-Ray Sun all the time with an HDRI. It's not always sunny, so you can stick with a simple HDR image and drive your lighting completely from that HDRI and don't use V-Ray Sun at all. And obviously some HDRIs do come with a sun element, so you don't necessarily have to add a V-Ray Sun on top of that. Let's load this Fright Station HDRI to get a more neutral look compared to these HDRIs that we have been using. We can play with the sun, but for now, let's align it to this green helper node. And let's wait a bit to see what we get. You can still rotate the sun or the HDRI. For example, in this case, it looks like we have two suns coming through, which looks a bit weird. So we can remedy that by rotating the HDRI a bit. You can do that on your own. Let me show you a final 1920 by 1080 render of this setup in the frame buffer. We can also color correct it a bit if we wanted to. Great, let's create a new null and save that as the third lighting setup. So in this video, we learned about interior lighting in Vray 4 Cinema 4D. See you in the next one. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.